Every so often, a company tries to reinvent the wheel. In 2022, BRP tried to reinvent the outboard motor and almost made it vanish. Their Rotax engine promised cleaner decks, quieter rides, and revolutionary design. It was sleek, hidden, and unlike anything Mercury or Yamaha dared to build. Yet behind the glossy press releases was a story of confusion, over-engineering, and ambition that ran headfirst into reality. What started as BRP's boldest experiment quickly turned into one of the strangest chapters in marine history. It's time to find out the shocking truth behind BRP's Rotax outboard. Now first, before we dive deeper, it's important to understand that BRP has done a lot of things right. They built Sea-Doo, Ski-Doo, and Can-Am into household names. They made snowmobiles exciting, ATVs fast and personal watercraft modern. But when it comes to boats, specifically outboard motors, BRP has a complicated history. For years, they tried to blend their power sports DNA into the marine world, from Evan Rood's legendary two-strokes to their final gamble, the Rotax outboard. And yet that gamble, depending on who you ask, was either brilliant innovation or corporate self-sabotage. Let's start with what BRP wanted. After shutting down Evin Rood's E-Tech division in 2020, they needed something to fill the gap. Dealers were angry, customers confused, and the company was left with decades of marine engineering suddenly going nowhere. BRP said it wasn't the end, it was a pivot toward new technologies, a classic way of saying, we're done with what wasn't working and we're betting everything on what's next. That next became the Rotax outboard, but this wasn't just another motor to hang off a transom, it was something completely different. The official name was Rotax S, and it was part of what BRP called Project Ghost. The goal was to reinvent what a boat engine could be – quieter, cleaner, hidden, and integrated. Instead of the usual tower of noise and oil dripping off the back of a pontoon, BRP wanted the power head buried under the deck. The result was a motor you barely saw, barely heard, and ideally barely had to touch. Rotax engineers turned the concept up upside down. Literally, instead of a vertical power head, they laid the engine horizontally and tucked it beneath the rear deck. The exhaust exited underwater, the gear case was short, and the cowling was sealed beneath a hatch. BRP called it stealth technology, not because it was invisible to radar, but because it was invisible to the eye. The real-world result was a clean transom with a huge flat swim platform. You could walk straight across the back of your boat, unimpeded, as if there was no engine at all. It looked sleek, futuristic, and like something that should have been impossible 10 years ago. BRP said this was the future of marine design, integrated propulsion systems, where boats and engines weren't two separate things, but one unified product. It wasn't about selling engines anymore. It was about selling experiences. Now, before we dive into how it worked and why it failed, hit subscribe and keep watching. Because the Rotax outboard isn't just another engine story, it's a bold experiment that changed BRP forever. Under the hood, or rather under the deck, the Rotax S used a 1.9-liter three-cylinder two-stroke engine with direct fuel injection. Sound familiar? It should. That's because it was, at its core, an Evinrude E-Tech G2 engine in disguise. BRP didn't kill two-strokes, they just rebranded them. This engine used the same principles Evinrude had built its reputation on – lightweight, torquey, efficient two-strokes combustion with electronic oil injection and no valve train. It produced versions between 115 and 150 horsepower, perfect for pontoons and runabouts. The compact low-profile design was actually brilliant for packaging. By laying it flat, BRP solved one of boating's most frustrating problems. 
deck space. Every inch reclaimed on a pontoon is a win, and the Rotax system gave back almost two feet of usable area thanks to what BRP called the Max Deck. The company also claimed it was 20% more fuel efficient than traditional outboards of similar power, and quieter by up to 40% at cruise. It was water-cooled, self-draining, and used a sealed exhaust path to minimize emissions. And in typical BRP fashion, they bragged that it needed no scheduled maintenance for the first five years or 500 hours. No oil changes, no gear lube drain, no spark plug replacements, just touchless reliability. In theory, it sounded like a revolution. In practice, it became another short-lived chapter in BRP's long story of almost their innovation. The rote access wasn't meant for every boat. BRP designed it specifically for their own new line of Manitou, Alumacraft, and Quintrex models, brands they owned. And that's where the problems began. Because this wasn't a motor you could bolt to anything, the hulls had to be re-engineered to fit the underdeck mounting and sealed compartments. That meant you couldn't just buy a Rotax outboard and slap it onto your favorite pontoon or fishing boat. It was a system, not a product. For Manitou pontoons, the integration looked incredible. The transom was smooth and quiet. When you idled past the dock, people had to double-check to see if the boat was even running. Some owners said it felt more like an electric boat than a combustion engine. But outside of BRP's own brands, no one else could use it. Boat builders weren't about to redesign their hull molds for a single engine system, especially one that might not even last five years in the market. And dealers were hesitant to stock a motor that couldn't be serviced anywhere else. Essentially, BRP had built a brilliant solution but for a problem only they could use. To understand why the Rotax outboard didn't take off, you have to understand the marine industry's DNA. Boating is conservative. People trust what's proven. Mercury and Yamaha dominate because their engines can bolt onto anything, be serviced anywhere, and last forever. BRP went the other way. They built a closed ecosystem. The hidden engine design, while sleek, was a nightmare for accessibility. Routine inspections required lifting the rear deck hatch and reaching into a tight compartment. Even simple diagnostics needed specialized BRP tools, and technicians trained specifically for that setup. Then there was heat. A typical outboard dissipates heat freely through its cowling. The rote access was enclosed, so it relied on additional ducting and ventilation systems. In high heat or high humidity conditions, that design made some owners nervous. It worked fine in testing, but skepticism spread faster than proof. And most importantly, timing killed it. The Rotax outboard arrived right as the industry was pivoting toward electric propulsion. By 2022 to 2023, companies like Mercury were unveiling Avatar electric outboards, while startups like Vision Marine were chasing high-voltage, zero-emissions systems. Against that backdrop, BRP's new two-stroke, no matter how efficient, looked like old news. The result? Limited adoption cautious dealers, and quiet forums filled with wait-and-see comments. The Rotax outboard didn't fail because it was bad. It failed because it arrived when the world had already moved on. The irony is that Rotax engines themselves are brilliant. Their reputation in snowmobiles, ATVs, ultralights, and personal watercraft is almost bulletproof. They're light, efficient, powerful, and practically indestructible when used in the right environment. Rotax engines power nearly every Ski-Doo snowmobile, every Sea-Doo watercraft, and most of the world's light sport aircraft. In these applications, they shine because they're compact, rev-happy, and integrated into vehicles designed specifically around them. And that's the key difference. Rotax thrives in controlled ecosystems. When BRP builds a Ski-Doo, the chassis, 
cooling, exhaust and airflow are all engineered around that engine. It's not a bolt-on product, it's a purpose-built system. The Rotax outboard tried to bring that same philosophy to boating, but boating doesn't work that way. The marine market values interchangeability and standardization. That's why Mercury can sell the same 150 Pro X to dozens of different hull makers worldwide. It's plug and play. Rotax was plug and pray. Now here's where the story gets almost poetic. The Rotax outboard was supposed to be BRP's marine rebirth after Evinrude's death, but in a strange way, it inherited Evinrude's ghost. When BRP shut down Evinrude, they didn't lose technology, they lost trust. The brand that pioneered two-stroke innovation had been abandoned overnight. Dealers were left with unsold inventory. Customers worried about part support. It created a cloud of uncertainty that hung over every new marine product BRP released after that. So when the Rotex S arrived, people asked, will this disappear too? And that hesitation was deadly. Boaters invest thousands into their propulsion systems. They want to know it'll still be supported a decade from now. BRP's track record, unfortunately, didn't inspire confidence. Even if the road access was reliable, and by all accounts, it actually was, the ghost of Evinrude made it hard to trust. Let's look at how it stacked up against rivals. A Yamaha F-150 four-stroke weighs around 480 pounds, produces 150 horsepower, and runs whisper quiet with decades of proven serviceability. The Rotax S-150 offered similar horsepower at roughly 390 pounds, a clear advantage in weight. It used direct injection instead of port fuel, giving it crisp throttle response and strong torque. But noise and vibration, while improved over older two strokes still couldn't match Yamaha's or Mercury's smoothness at idle. And emissions. BRP claimed the Rotax met strict EPA and CARB standards, but consumers were still wary of two-stroke anything. The irony, modern direct injection two-strokes are often cleaner than old carburetted four-strokes, but try convincing buyers of that after decades of anti-smoke marketing. The performance numbers were solid. But image matters just as much as engineering, and Rotax never shook off its association with Evinrude's fall. Dealers described it as an engineering marvel that customers didn't quite understand. The integrated Max Deck pontoon sold well for lux, not for performance. People loved the extra deck space, the quiet idle, and the futuristic feel, but once they realized it was an internal mount two-stroke that only BRP could service, hesitation set in. Owners in online forums described it as a brilliant concept in the wrong market. Some praised the quiet operation and power. Others complained about difficult access to filters, tight service spaces, and limited parts availability outside BRP's network. Ironically, most breakdowns weren't even engine failures. They were software or sensor faults. In typical BRP style, the technology was ahead of its time, but dependent on diagnostics that few shops could handle. BRP's official explanation was that the Rotax outboard wasn't meant to compete with Mercury or Yamaha head-on. It was meant to redefine the boating experience, but redefining is risky when customers aren't asking for change. Mercury's approach has always been incremental innovation, slightly quieter, slightly faster, slightly lighter. BRP swung for the fences. They built something genuinely different. But they forgot that difference alone doesn't sell boats. When you walk into a marina, you see dozens of outboards lined up like soldiers. Boaters want what's proven. They want to know a replacement lower unit can be found anywhere in Florida, not just at a certified Rotax dealer in Quebec. And while BRP dreamed of modular marine propulsion, the world was busy electrifying. The industry conversation had already shifted toward battery range, not fuel tanks. So BRP found itself once again with great technology and no audience. 
As of 2025, BRP still lists the Rotax outboard on its Mana 2 pontoon lineup, mostly as the Rotax S115 and 150 HP options. But availability is limited, and production numbers are low. You'll find more of them in showrooms than on the water. Rumors suggest BRP may use the same under-deck layout for future hybrid or electric systems, leveraging the compact footprint of the Rotax housing for battery integration. It would make sense. The platform is already sealed and space-efficient, and Rotax already builds electric and hybrid drivetrains for other applications. In other words, the Rotax outboard might have been a test bed, a way for BRP to learn how to hide propulsion under the deck before replacing pistons with batteries. If that's true, then maybe the Rotax outboard didn't fail. Maybe it just came too early. Also, before I forget, there's something almost ironic about BRP's journey. They built one of the world's most advanced two-stroke outboards, and then hid it. It's like making a Lamborghini and parking it under the floorboards. They took the loudest, flashiest piece of any boat, the engine, and said, let's make it invisible. It's pure BRP thinking. Rebellious, clever, and slightly impractical. The same company that made snowmobiles that can jump mountains thought boaters would want their engines to disappear. The concept wasn't bad. The execution wasn't bad. The timing was just spectacularly unlucky. The bigger truth here is that Rotax still has a future in water, just not as a hanging outboard. BRP's expertise lies in jet propulsion, not propeller shafts. Rotax engines power every sea do on Earth, and that's an ecosystem BRP fully controls – engine, hull, software, and service. If BRP decides to electrify sea do or Manitou pontoons fully, expect Rotax to be the beating heart of those systems, whether through a compact rotary electric hybrid or an integrated jet drive. The company even filed multiple patents in 2023 for under-deck electric propulsion layouts, suspiciously similar to the Rotax S design. So in a way, the Rotax outboard wasn't a failure. It was a prototype for BRP's next chapter. But as a commercial product, it never got the chance to grow. The marine industry just wasn't ready for stealth outboards with no visible cowling and limited compatibility. The shocking truth behind BRP's Rotax outboard is that it was never meant to be an outboard in the traditional sense. It was BRP's escape plan, a bridge between combustion and electric propulsion, disguised as innovation. They couldn't compete with Mercury's dealer network or Yamaha's bulletproof four-strokes, so they tried to rewrite the rulebook. But rewriting the rules doesn't always work when everyone else is playing the same old game. Still, you can't fault them for trying, because in a world where every boat engine looks the same, BRP dared to build one that didn't. And maybe, years from now, when electric pontoons rule the lake, someone will open a maintenance hatch, see that flat, tucked-away power unit, and think, this looks familiar. And they'll realize it all started with the forgotten Rotax S. BRP's Rotax outboard will go down as one of the most fascinating what-ifs in marine history. It had everything. Great engineering, bold design, clean integration, and a visionary brand behind it. But boating isn't just about ideas. It's about longevity, trust, and service. Rotax outboards were too ahead of their time, too confined to BRP's ecosystem, and too misunderstood by the market that needed them most. But one thing's for sure, they showed us what's possible when a company refuses to play it safe. Sometimes innovation doesn't win the market, but it wins the story. So while BRP's Rotax outboard may have vanished beneath the surface, its influence hasn't. It's the ghost in the deck, the silent engine that proved even the boldest designs can sink if the world isn't ready to float with them. And that's the shocking truth behind BRP's Rotax outboard. If you love uncovering the wild stories behind forgotten engines and boating's strangest experiments, hit subscribe, drop a comment, and tell us, was BRP ahead of its time, or did they just outsmart themselves?